Oh, okay, we're boy. talking with two members of Duran Duran today here on California Music Channel, Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBon. And um, I want to talk to them now a little bit about studio work. Um, you know, when we see these video clips, the audio quality is just fantastic, and normally that's because what we're hearing is the phonograph record itself, although you see them on location. Phonograph? Yeah. Phonograph. Phonograph. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Have you got square wheels on your car? <laughs> I still say hi-fi, too. In San Francisco, too. they haven't tell, invented tell fi yet. <laughs> I do. I still say hi-fi. Tell them to hook their... Uh, well, that's what people call it, isn't it? Hi-fi. Oh, fi. stereos. High fidelity. High fidelity. <laughs> anyway. My mummy's got a gramophone. A gra <laughs> it's got a trumpet on it, you know, one of those big trumpet things. Yeah. Sorry, I oh, interrupted that's you. That's okay. You know, I had this all prepared, but... <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if you would talk a little bit about what it's like making the actual cuts on the records and with all the work that must well, be involved. For the in phonograph it. records, we sit there with a, with a needle and, and scratch into a piece of <laughs> wax. <laughs> it takes quite a while to make them, actually. Um, <laughs> the first album took a lot longer for us to make than the second one did. Um, the second one only taking about six weeks to write altogether and six weeks to record. We recorded it in London in a studio called Air, which has got amazing equipment, probably the best in England. Excuse um, me, you, you're saying it only took six weeks to write that whole Rio album? Yeah, and six to record. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. Which is yeah, quite a lot faster than the first one because that was sort of ideas that we'd built up over the past three years or whatever. We'd all got our own ideas and then just sort of stuck them all together. But that was written as a whole album just within six weeks. Yeah, the, the Air Studios actually is quite a fantastic place. It's in quite incredible. I mean, the desk there for a start is, is amazing. It's as big as this room. It's got so many little knobs and buttons on it, it sort of drives you crazy when you're looking at it. You actually go cross-eyed sometimes looking at all the little lights that are flashing. But the best thing about it is the, um, is the studio space itself. It's very tall and, and very big. It's a big studio, so it gives you a very live sort of sound when you're recording. And um, it gives a real, a real kind of spark, especially with the drums and, uh, and the vocals as well. Do you all play together at once when you make a cut? And make a, a song? If we no. did that, we'd end up fighting. <laughs> oh, so yeah. you do go in one at a time sometimes? Well, what happens usually is that, yeah, you use 24 tracks. Um, what we do, we work out the basic structuring of a song, and then uh, John and Roger will go in and put down the bass and drums, which they have to work out exactly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Simon, Andy, and myself can sort of play about on top of that. Once the basis is down, you can experiment in the studio. You can get your original idea and sort of change it around a bit. And you see, we are a very kind of democratic band. We all are involved in the writing of the songs. Right from the very beginning, everybody has um, a very important input. And a lot of the writing work and arrangement is done actually in the studio when we're recording, rather than before. So um, people have, when you go into the studio, everybody has a great responsibility to fulfill, you know. So you really do believe in spontaneity? Oh, yes. absolutely, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You wait until I start taking your trousers off. I wanted to ask them all these questions yesterday, you know. <laughs> but they said no. So no, you can't ask the questions now. You have to wait until tomorrow. Thank you. Cheat. Oh, yeah. that's great. Um, what else was there? I was going to say something. Pity, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> well, this is the group Duran Duran with their great album, Rio. Oh, that's There's what so many I was going to say. pretty songs on it. There's one called Save a Prayer for Tomorrow. The Morning After. Oh, the Save Morning After. Yeah. Yeah. Save a Prayer Till the Morning After. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's you very like that pretty. One. I like that a lot. Yeah, we've, um, that was, um, I don't know, in a way that was kind of the pivot of the album. When we wrote that one, we knew that it was going to be a, a, a decent record, the whole uh -huh. thing, because it, it fell together so easily and so naturally. And... Um, I don't know, there's a, there's a real nice kind of originality to that song, although it sounds as, as like though... Like the Bellamy Brothers. <laughs> yeah, as though it sounds like the Bellamy Brothers. And <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, I like it. Come on, don't knock your own records, for God's sake, man. Well, everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, it was I really it was did have something like else to say, actually, but I forgot what it was. Okay, well... <laughs> well, that looks about it, then. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll be back. Thank you very much.